I'm going to be making some more progress on my latest project carpet that was given to me over a year ago. My beautiful girlfriend Kat had this in the cupboard. I ignored my frozen fingers and carried on cleaning the carpet a section at a time. It's making my fingers feel like I've got frostbite. What I've got hanging here in my shed is a brake servo and the tower for it. Warm climate of my paint drying room. Dropping off the bucket, got a load of paint on the floor which was really hard to clean up. Noticed a couple of scabs up in here. Sanded the whole dash and the A pillars. So now it's time to check out these gloss black parts. But yeah, just look at the uh, mirror shine on that. Hello and welcome to this video. I'm Marcus Hayes and in this video I'm going to be making some more progress on my latest project, Heidi, the Hearing Aid Beige Model Mark II Escort. And I'm going to start by cracking on with a couple of bits here at home. All right, so what I've got here is a brown Mark II Escort carpet that was given to me over a year ago by a subscriber called Casey. Massive thanks again to you if you're watching, mate. Definitely looks like it's been sort of sun bleached on these front areas, but you know, when you've got car mats there, you won't see that. And it looks like a piece has been cut out here um, for some reason, but um, yeah, that's where one of the feet of the seats goes anyway but what i'm thinking is i could maybe nick a bit from somewhere that's not visible maybe um over this area you know when the center console's in you probably won't see that area so maybe i could cut a bit out of there and stitch it into there but yeah what i want to do first is try and clean this thing up as much as i can my beautiful girlfriend cat had this in the cupboard so i'm going to give this a go over the whole thing i squeezed the bottle to get the product onto the brush and then just worked the product into the carpet. Then I wiped it with a damp microfiber and I could clearly see how much dirt I was pulling out, which gave me some motivation to continue the process. Well, it definitely seems to be doing something. I don't actually think these areas are sun bleached. I think these are more the actual color and maybe the rest of it is, you know, really dirty. I ignored my frozen fingers and carried on cleaning the carpet a section at a time and it wasn't long before I'd done the whole thing. And then to finish, I went over it with this brush. Well, it's definitely looking a lot cleaner now. There's definitely uh, a bit too much of the cleaning products still in the carpet. It's making my fingers feel like I've got frostbite trying to use the damp cloth to remove all of the product. But I'm hoping this product will dry see-through or at least dry off so that it's not wet anymore. And then uh, maybe when it's in the car, I can give it a brush and a hoover to get some of the product out. But yeah, it is now at least clean enough for me to be willing to put this in Heidi. So I think I'll throw it indoors and then hopefully it will dry off with the uh, heat in, in the house. But uh, yeah, I have got another thing I want to crack on with today. All right, so a couple of hours have passed and what I've got hanging here in my shed is a brake servo and the tower for it. I actually purchased these from my friend David Coogan when him and Danny came down to see me with their Mark II Escort van and I'm going to be repainting these bits gloss black. They were actually in really good shape. The servo had a couple of sort of scabs of surface rust and then when I started attacking it with the wire brush on the drill, the paint came off so easy I just decided to bare metal the whole thing. On the back here, I haven't really gone to town at all. That sort of square section in the middle will be covered when it's attached to the tower and I've just keyed up roughly these bits around here but yeah you won't see any of that when it's bolted to the car this tower I've literally just given it a tickle with these sort of foam sanding pads that I got from Kent Europe and they've keyed up the old paint nicely there was a couple of areas where you know there was a bit of surface rust and I just went to town a bit more on them and around the edges inevitably you know it has gone back to bare metal but um, yeah this tower and this servo are in really good shape so they should look really nice when they're painted. David does have the master cylinder for this servo 
servo. He's going to dig it out for me and I'm going to collect it from him in a couple of days. These actually came out of the Coogan's Gold Mark II Escort and Danny said that the servo worked fine and that gold Escort is now actually being torn apart by David who is uh, putting a Larry cross flow in it. He's already fitted a guard track pedal box which is why these were surplus to requirements. David done me a really good deal on this servo as well so massive thanks to you if you're watching. Anyway I've given these bits a good clean with white spirit just because I don't have any degreaser in my shed here at home and I've been hitting them with my paint dryer which my beautiful girlfriend Kat sometimes uses to dry her hair. I'm going to give these a bit more uh, heat with the hair dryer before I then hit them with etch primer and then I'm going to hit them with the Kent 1k high build primer and both of those cans are actually warming up in boiling water right now. I do actually have some suspension top mounts that I want to paint gloss black along with these bits but it's getting cold and I think I'm going to run out of daylight before I get those bits prepped so um, yeah I thought I might as well just crack on with these bits and then I can prep those top mounts maybe tomorrow. All right, it's been a few hours since the last clip and I did give those bits another coat of the 1K high build primer off camera. And then I brought them into the warm climate of my paint drying room, which sometimes doubles as a living room. But uh, my beautiful girlfriend's just got home from work, so I really need to tidy this area up. But before I do, let me show you what the bits look like. I've got the servo tower here, and that is literally gonna need a really quick prep before I can paint that gloss black. I'll just show you the uh, servo. I actually haven't had a look at this myself yet. But yeah, same story. This has had a really, really high build put on it. I put an extra coat on this because um, yeah, it was quite pitted in places. So yeah, I just want to get it nice and smooth before I paint it. So yeah, I'm sure that's going to be uh, nice and easy to prep and paint as well. And I actually did end up diving into prepping the top mounts in the end. Got one of them over here. Again, put a, a nice, good few coats on this. So I should be able to sand it down nice and smooth before I paint it. And the other one I had a bit of a disaster with <laughs> because uh, when I brought them both in, they were on this bucket. I had them on this bucket when I was painting them. And basically this one, I ended up dropping off the bucket, got a load of paint on the floor, which was really hard to clean up. The white spirit I had didn't touch it. I ended up having to scrape it off. But um, yeah, then I had to wait for the primer to dry and then sand down the bits that were all messed up from where it drops on the floor. And then I gave it another little coat in those areas and there was barely enough paint left in the can. But um, yeah, that's looking sweet now as well. Over here, I've got some of the bits from the top mounts and the servo. These little top hat bits, they sort of go on there and then the uh, shock absorber thread comes through there and you put a nut on. I've got more sets of these, so I'll probably get these plated. And if I end up doing that before I fit the front legs to Heidi, then so be it. If not, I'll fit these ones and then I can switch them over once I get the plated ones back. So yeah, I didn't bother prepping and painting them. And then here I've got all the bits from the servo. So we've got this bracket that connects the servo to the brake rod and I've already replated one of them. So I won't be using this. We've got this little union which the vacuum pipe attaches to which then goes to your inlet manifold and that has this little seal which um, I'm sure I saw a little crack in earlier. Yeah, there. I don't know, maybe the seal still seals but I'm guessing this is only going to be a few quid to buy so I'll buy a new one of them. And then there was this sort of seal on the back, no, on the front, sorry, where the master cylinder attaches to. Uh, yeah, that looks a bit mullered as well, so I'm sure I'll be able to pick up one of them for a couple of quid. And then these are the, the uh, nuts that hold the servo to the tower. I'm pretty sure that's just a normal metric thread. If so, I can put new nuts and washers on that. Um, if it is a weird thread, then I'll get these re plated. And then this was a, a little grommet that was on um, a part of the bracket to the servo. 
hello into a new day and today I've come around the garage quite late in the day. I was actually really busy all day and I wasn't going to come around here today but the next thing I want to crack on with on Heidi is painting her dash and as I've mentioned before once this is done I can really steam forward with this project. So I thought if I come around here today and prep and primer it I'll be able to come back around tomorrow or the next day and then prep and paint it. Now, to be honest, when I come around here today, I was actually thinking about using some compound on the dash and just seeing how bad it is because I thought I might actually get away with not repainting it. But I've noticed a couple of scabs up in here, um, which really need to be ground back, you know, with a, a wire brush at least. So um, yeah, I've decided I'm gonna stick to plan A and repaint this dash. But the majority of it is literally just gonna need a key with the Kent foam sanding pads. And then I'll give the dash a coat of the 1K high build primer from Kent. And then once that's smoothed out, I'll spray it with the Kent satin black paint. Another thing I need to do, which I mentioned at the end of the last video, is to put some sealer around this welding patch and this welding patch. I forgot to do that sealing before I painted those patches. And to do that, I'll use the Kent seam sealer. I started by masking up the holes in the bulkhead and then I covered the whole engine bay with a sheet. Next, I set about removing any remaining parts from Heidi's dash. Out came the heat events. Then I removed this relay. And then I set about removing these plastic clips. Next, I removed the two vents in the center of the dash, and then I found some more clips, this time metal ones. It was time to attack the rust just below the bottom of the windscreen aperture, so I used an abrasive wheel on a drill and then smoothed the area out with sandpaper. I started keying the dash with the Kent foam sanding pad, and then I thought it'd be a good idea to put some cure rust on the area that I just removed the rust from, even though the cure rust wasn't realistically going to have enough time to set. Then it was back to key in the dash and the A pillars, and then I gave everything a good degrease. I used Maud's engine to heat up the Kent epoxy and high build primer, then I added some more masking to Heidi and applied some epoxy primer only to the areas where I broke through during the prep. I used a hairdryer to dry the epoxy and then it was on with the Kent High Build Primer. I applied a really light first coat followed by two heavier coats, which I got on just before it went dark. The next day I got the Gold Flex sandpaper and sanded the whole dash and the A-pillars to make them nice and smooth, ready for the Kent Satin Black 1K paint which we warmed up in the cockpit of my beautiful girlfriend Kat's Focus. I gave Heidi's cockpit a hoover, her dash a degrease, and then Kat warmed up her dash with a hairdryer whilst I added some more sheet to the floor. I sprayed some epoxy onto the areas where I broke through during sanding, which Kat helped to dry with the hairdryer. Then I used some tack rags from my friends at Bodycraft in Watford to remove any traces of dust. Then it was time for the fun bit. I started applying the satin black paint, keeping the first coat super light and just making sure that I cover every area of the dash and the A-pillars. Once that was touch dry, I followed up with two heavier coats, pushing it as far as I could without getting any runs. And I think I'd done quite well. Once those coats were touch dry, I removed the masking to see what it looked like, and I was very happy with the results. And I couldn't see any overspray on any of the fresh beige paint, which was a bonus. Hello, into another new day. Now I had to leave the garage pretty sharpish after I unmasked Heidi yesterday because I had to go and meet up with David Coogan to grab this master cylinder off of him, which he didn't have with him when he sold me the servo and the tower. Now that Heidi's dash is painted, I can really get going with this project. I did seal up and respray those patches on her floor, by the way, which means I can fit the carpet. I can fit all the bits to the dashboard. I've already got loads of bits that I've already restored that I can bolt to the car. 
car, like the pedal box, like the steering column. Yeah, the list goes on and on and on. I can really dive into the project now. And I'm actually interested in what you guys think I should crack on with next. Should I start bolting some of the shiny bits to Heidi's shell, or should I tackle some of the more boring stuff first, like the wiring, making up brake pipes, etc., etc.? Let me know in the comments what you think I should do next. In my shed here, I've been spending a bit more time on the servo and the tower. I've now given these bits a bit of a tickle with the gold flex sandpaper, so they're nice and smooth, and they're now ready to paint. Yeah, the servo is uh, looking nice and smooth as well. There is like sort of roughness on this, just where there was pits in it, but I'm gonna be painting these in two pack paint, which is nice and thick. So yeah, it should bury a lot of that roughness. And I'm gonna be using the two pack spray cans from my friends at Bodycraft in Watford. And don't forget, you can get 10% off of everything at Bodycraft in Watford by using my discount code MH10. I'll leave a link to their website in the description. I've also given the top mounts the same treatment so they're smooth and ready to paint as well. Just got to wait for my beautiful girlfriend to finish using her hairdryer so that I can uh, heat those parts up before I paint them. And the two pack spray can is already in a bowl of boiling water waiting. So uh, yeah, can't wait to get these bits painted black. Out came the hairdryer once again to heat up the parts before painting. Then I activated the two pack spray can by pulling and twisting the pin. And then after a shake, it was time to apply the gloss black to the parts. I went super light at first, of course, and kept using the hairdryer to keep the parts warm between the coats. Hello into another new day, and I thought before I end this video, I should wait for the paint to dry on those gloss black parts to show you guys. But before we get into that, I've got to send a massive thanks and a shout out to two subscribers. In fact, they're both Patreons. Now, it's no secret that with a channel as small as mine, the guys that are joined up to my Patreon contributing to the channel every month is a lifesaver. So massive thanks to everyone who is a Patreon. I will, of course, leave a link to my Patreon in the description for anyone else who wants to jump on board and give me some support. But yeah, I've had some extra help from two of my Patreons recently. So massive thanks to Timu Vartanen and Andrew Tompkinson. Timu has very kindly dropped some extra cash into my PayPal, and it's not the first time he's done that, so massive, massive thanks to you. I've already spent all the money on some parts for Heidi. I bought a couple of bits for her fuel tank, and I bought some suspension components, which I'm gonna show everyone on the channel very soon. But Andrew Tompkinson sent me a care package with some parts, so uh, let me show you those. And what I've got here are some poly bushes, and these go where the anti-roll bar meets the track control arms. Now, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure if I'm gonna be switching those particular bushes out on the Heidi for poly bushes, but I wanna send a massive thanks out to Andrew for sending me them. Obviously, the other two escorts are running poly bushes everywhere, so I could keep these as a spare set, or maybe I will end up switching um, Heidi to poly bushes all round as well. But yeah, massive thanks again to Andrew and Timu for for your ongoing support through Patreon and also for more than once sending me some extra cash and parts. So now it's time to check out these gloss black parts. I gave them two heavy coats after the dust coat and as you can see I've now put the servo tower and servo together. I've also reinstalled this valve and the seal here which has actually got a crack on it. I was expecting to see these seals for sale on eBay and I couldn't find them anywhere but if any of you guys know where I can and get one of those seals from do let us know but i think you know the bit where the valve and the hole meet um is fine so it probably still does seal and with the valve actually in place you can't see the split on the seal anyway i've just installed a couple of these uh, nuts back on here but um yeah i will be putting brand new ones on eventually but yeah this thing is looking awesome the two pack spray paint is just so shiny there is a bit of dust on it but um yeah, the paint job came out really good. There is some runs on the other side. Don't know if it's gonna show on camera, but yeah, there's loads of runs around here, but that'll be the side that'll be up against the inner wing when it's installed. There is a couple of runs 
around here again i don't know if you're going to see it on on the camera but they're very subtle um when it's fitted i may wet and dry and polish those but you know probably when it's in the car the inlet manifold and stuff uh, might cover it and you know you've got the brake pipes that are going to run along here i think anyway so yeah i'll probably leave it but i just absolutely love how shiny the two-pack paint is look at the reflection on that it's awesome still need to clean up the master sender and i'll probably give that a repaint with some wheel silver or something and then uh yeah when that's bolted onto here it really is going to look awesome but yeah just look at the uh mirror shine on that uh, apart from all the handprints on it and stuff but yeah pucker and the top mounts came out really nice as well super super shiny and yeah they're going to look awesome poking through the inner wings of Heidi's engine bay. So there we go, another couple of shiny bits to add to the huge pile of parts that are now ready to fit to Heidi. And uh, yeah, she's really gonna start coming together over the next few videos, and I can't wait to get stuck in. Do let us know in the comments what you think I should tackle next on the build, and definitely subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to keep up to date with future videos. So for now, I'm gonna end this video here. If you did think it was any good, please do give it a thumbs up and a share. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Click subscribe if you're new. Feel free to follow me on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. Check out my website for merchandise and car parts. Massive thanks as always to my patrons for your ongoing support. I'll leave all the links to everything in the description along with my email address for anyone who wants to contact me. But other than that, until next time, thanks for watching.